Hi, my name is Doug, a developer here at RSVP Services. Today we're going to be covering how to build your RSVP reservation form that will appear on the website that your guests will visit to RSVP. To begin, I'd like to cover the different items in the toolbox, which will be over here on your right-hand side of the screen. All the items in the toolbox represent different form items that can be added and removed from your RSVP web form to pose different questions to your guests. The first item, which in most cases will be the first item that is on the RSVP form already, is the name and number attending. This particular item simply asks for the number of guests that will be attending and then also asks for the name of the party or each individual guest, whichever you prefer. The next item in the list, which is the first item that you're actually able to drag onto your RSVP web form, is, uh, d is a text box. With this item, you'll be able to submit a question to your guests, and it'll be followed by a text box for them to type an answer into. The next item in the toolbox is the drop-down list. This will allow you to pose a question to your guests, followed by a list of different options for them to choose from. This will be most commonly used for um, the gathering of food items and such. The next tool in the toolbox is the drop-down list um, for numbers, and this is essentially the same tool that we just covered, but instead of um, providing textual options for your guests to choose between, it'll provide numeric options. And the last two items in the toolbox, um, a checkbox list and a radio button list, these are very similar where they will both provide additional um, or groups of options for your guests to choose from. The key difference is that checkbox list will allow your guests to choose more than one option, while the radio button list will only allow one option to be selected at any given time. Okay, if you look on over to the left hand side of your screen, this is the drag and drop area where you will build your RSVP web form. Right now, as you can see, we only have one item on it, and it is um, the name and number attending item. And if you go ahead and click the properties button next to this item, you'll see there, there are many different properties that we need to fill out for any particular item that we add to our RSVP form. So let's go ahead and cover the different properties. The first one, instructions to a guest, this is the actual question that's going to appear to your guests that are visiting your RSVP web page. And right now, as you can see, the default question for this item, please select the number of guests attending along with the name of each guest. Okay, the next property allows you to decide whether the guest should provide the name of each guest within a party or if they can simply provide one name, such as the name that was printed on the invitation. If they choose the option to um, provide the name of each guest, which we have selected here, it will actually provide an additional text box for each number that they select. So, for example, if they choose three guests are attending, there will be three separate text boxes that appear for them to input the individual name of each of the three guests. The next property, required or optional, will prevent a user from submitting their reservation if it's set to required. If it's set to optional, the user will be able to submit the reservation without answering this question. The next property, the minimum maximum RSVP values, this simply is the minimum maximum number allowed to RSVP. Most commonly, the minimum will be changed here if you are only expecting reservations and not regrets, in which case you would change this to one, not even allowing a guest to submit a reservation of zero. And finally, the last property you see here, I'm actually not going to cover within this control. We'll wait. We're going to drag out a few more items here in just a moment. And when we do that, we'll cover this final property. So let's go ahead and do that right away. The, fir um, the first thing we're going to drag over is a drop-down list of text items because we're going to be asking for a dinner selection. So this is a perfect way to ask for a dinner selection. The next item we'll drag over is a text box because we're going to ask for a um, music music recommendations for the ceremony. We're setting up a wedding RSVP 
form, so we're going to ask for music recommendations that they may have. And then lastly, we're going to drag out a checkbox list because we are going to have a few different events and give them the option to come to some, all, or none of them. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open the properties of the first item that we dragged onto the canvas. And let's go ahead and jump right in and start editing the properties. The first one, the instructions to the guest, this is going to be our dinner selection. So we're just going to type in dinner selection as our instruction. The next property, the require each person within a party to answer this question, we will change that to yes because it is a question that everyone needs to answer. We need to know what each individual wants for dinner. And then we're going to list our options. We'll make it simple and go with chicken. And then one other nice feature here is you can check this box if you want this to be checked by default. So whichever one you check here will automatically be selected in your list. And then the next one will be beef. Required or optional, again, you get to choose whether or not they have to submit this information, and we want to put this as required. The last property is the one that we skipped over moments ago, but in this control, we're definitely going to want to complete it. What this property does, it allows you to connect the question here to a column in your guest list. Your guest list you'll be viewing frequently. It's where all your reservations will ultimately end up. So it's great to set up a spot for this information to be stored right off the bat. So we'll go ahead and click Create New. And the new column name, we're just going to call it Dinner. And so now in your guest list, there's a new column called Dinner. And right now, for any guest that's in your guest list, it's empty. And once you edit it through your guest list, or a guest submits it through, through a reservation, you'll have their dinner selection. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question. This is a text box, and this is where we're going to ask people for music recommendations. So, Do you have any music recommendations for the reception? The next property, do we want to require each person to answer the question? Um, no, we only need this answered once. Is it required? No, we won't require people to provide this information. And yes, we will connect it to a column in our guest list. And since we have no columns, we will choose Create New. And notice the last column that we created didn't show up because once you connect an item to a column, you can't connect it to another item. You'll have to unconnect it if you want to connect it to another item. So the name of this column is going to be Music Recommendations. And we'll add the column. OK, and now finally, we'll go down to our last question, which here we chose to have a group of checkboxes. So we're going to ask them, which events are you attending? Require each person. No, we can just ask this of the party. And we will have a reception which we will go ahead and say that that's checked by default because if you're coming, you're coming to the reception, the ceremony. Again, if you're coming, you're coming to the ceremony. And then lastly, the going away party. And a lot of people probably aren't coming to that, so we won't make them, or we won't have that checked by default. Okay, and then the next required or optional, you know, typically, you know, this is, you can go either way here. Since I've already selected some of them to be chosen by default, I'm not even going to require it. Okay, and then last, we're going to, again, create a new column in our guest list. And this time, we'll call it events attending. Okay. So now we have four separate questions. We want their names, we want their dinner selections, we want a uh, music recommendation if they have any, and then we want to know which events they're attending. At any time when you're on this page, you can scroll down and you will see a slight preview of your RSVP web form. This preview isn't as functional as the actual page, so we will go ahead and cl click on the click for a live preview link and view the page that we just created. As you can see, the rest of the web page itself we have yet to set up. There's only a very basic template in there. 
But here's the RSVP form that we just built. If you choose, let's say, two, there's two people attending, it'll build the additional fields for you. So we'll put in Doug, I will take the chicken, and then Tanya, put in the beef. Let's go ahead and tell them that we want to hear some Radiohead. <laughs> and then we'll submit our reservation. Actually, before I submit the reservation, I'll take away Tanya's dinner selection, and then I'll try to submit the reservation. So as you can see, it won't allow us to submit the reservation, and it pulls up the red required label. So we'll go ahead and choose her beef, and then we'll submit the reservation. There we go. So we've just submitted a reservation using the RSVP web form that we built just moments ago. If you'd like to see how to retrieve and update the RSVP that we just submitted, there's definitely a video that will cover it on our YouTube channel. Just visit www.youtube.com slash RSVP services. Thanks for watching.